My first time playing hockey didn't go as planned. I was seven years old. We were at the old Memorial Arena in our hometown, and there was no glass in this rink. It was one of those old barns that had a lot of character, a lot of history. Um, but when I stepped on the ice, I hated it immediately. I wasn't very good. I couldn't skate. I continued to go up to my coaches and ask them to get off and cry, and, and I would carry on. And when they weren't listening to me, I skated over to my mother and my sister, who are sitting in the stands, exhausted because it's 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm crying and yelling and screaming, just asking for Tim Hortons. As much as I love the game now, it didn't start out that way. It wasn't love at first sight and it was a really hard time that Saturday morning. I was so excited. My husband had played, my brothers had played, and I thought, now I've got my son in it. We're gonna go to the rink and he's gonna love it. And I dragged my young daughter out of bed at six in the morning and off we went. And I could see in the car ride on the way there, he was getting a little apprehensive. And I said to him, go on the ice, do your best, and I'll get you a donut. When you're all done, I will get you a donut. So that was my first mistake. He went out on the ice. He proceeded to flail around. He started to cry. He then yelled at the coach and asked him to get off. And so I quit making eye contact with him and pretended I didn't really know whose kid he was until he then skated over to me and started yelling, I want a donut. So it certainly didn't go as I had thought it would. And I had always grown up with hockey and just assumed that my child would love it and want to play. And it was a pretty bad experience. And I thought, this kid is never going to love hockey. This was me that loved it. And just because I loved it, I thought he would too. And that wasn't necessarily the case. They just feel so much internal pressure. You know, they have enough pressure from their coach but then you can see them the odd times, either it's looking at their parents or they're worried about that ride home. When their season ends or their hockey career ends, they all say that that damaged their relationship with their parents. And I've seen it over and over again where kids say, you know what, I, some games I play because because I hate my dad that day. Or my mom. I think we did a good job on the rides home. We weren't the kind of parents that yelled and screamed at him. And I hated the car rides home. You barely let me get in the car before you started asking questions about the game. Cut. I've seen that numerous times. My experience is that it's, it, it happens more at the, at the younger level. This particular player was an elite, elite player. Could not separate the father and the son. It eventually chased him out of the game. Um, he, he made it all the way to the pro, uh, but that relationship never healed. I, I coach players. Um, but that's been one of the things I've learned over time. This job would exhaust you if you try and coach both. So I make it pretty clear who I'm coaching. I put a lot of pressure on myself to do well, just because I want to be, I want people to recognize that I've played well. I mean, I certainly try not to put pressure on them, but uh, I mean, we talk hockey in our house probably way too much. I mean, my job is in hockey. I coach the, both the kids in some capacity or another. So the challenge for us is dinner time should be dinner time and family time and uh, trying to avoid talking about hockey and maybe talking about school and other important things in life. I have to kind of bite my tongue sometimes and, and change the conversation. I didn't think I was being critical, but when I look back, I was. And my son picked up on it right away, the tone of my voice. And although it was coming from a good place, my heart's in the right place. I feel for him out there and I want him to do well. I know what he's capable of doing. Sometimes I feel he's not meeting my expectations and I don't want to be that kind of parent. I think unless they're going to get involved and learn and be in it for the right reasons, and it's not just about their son or their daughter, but it's about the 15, 17, 20 players. And if they can look at it that way and look at themselves in the mirror at the end of it, end of that day and say, yes, I'm in it for the right reasons, then great, give back to the game. Because we need more volunteers and volunteerism in general. Otherwise, the best thing they can do is be there, support the people that are giving their time. We push the kids always with their sports, with their school, um, and we try to do it in a positive way. You know, sometimes it's, you, you wonder a little bit after whether or not you said the right thing. I don't think we ever regretted it, but we tried to help them kind of achieve what they wanted to achieve. Let your team do what they've been taught and not like put so much pressure on them because like we know how to perform in certain situations. I feel like um, I've got a lot of like expectations and things to live up to and when I'm not, then I feel like people are upset with me and so I just kind of, I've got to work a lot harder I think on and off the ice. The more you push, the farther you push them away at the end of the day. So, When I finally discovered my love for hockey, I was eight years old and we were at our family cottage with uh, all my cousins and, and my one older cousin 
had a pair of goalie pads with them. And I wasn't that good of a skater. I uh, didn't really have the, the skill that hockey players have. So I put on the pads, he let me put on the pads. They went up to about my chin. I could just stand in a net. And of course, with my 40-year-old uncles, they weren't gonna fire shots at their eight-year-old nephew. So I, I thought I was pretty good at it because they were going a little easy on me or very easy on me. But I think uh, that competitive nature in me made me love it because it actually seemed like I was good at it. And uh, from then on, I was hooked. I liked being that guy that had the uh, say in the game where I could either make or break it. And uh, maybe I regretted that in the long run, but um, that's when I fell in love with it, when I put on the pads. It was an eye-opening experience for me when I saw Brock fall in love with hockey. It was such a difference from the first time we had him on the ice when he played out to when he discovered goalie pads. He put them on and he would punch them and he liked the feeling of the pucks hitting them and you could just tell he felt like a bit of a superhero in net. And from that point on, he woke up ahead of us before practice. He was ready for games. There was no more crying on the ice. There was no more, I want to get off. He couldn't wait to get on. And I realized once he'd found the passion for the sport, how much easier it was and how much more fun it was for everybody. There was an effort to get him to the games. It was an easy transition because he loved it so much. And I think that's where parents get a little bit stuck when they are forcing their kids to do things. It shouldn't be work. They should love it. They should be wanting it more than you do. And it makes the whole experience better and a whole lot easier. For more information on the Lessons from Behind the Glass video series, visit bchockey.net or lessonsfrombehindtheglass.com.